Modern medical science has saved the lives of many burn victims, even if they have extensive injuries. Now, the skin is never the same, of course, which can lead to a dramatic drop in quality of life. But as Mary Ann finds out, some exciting new research is offering hope for the future. I couldn't imagine the pain that I was in, no. From head to toe, no, not at all. When you're in the chefing game, the nerve endings get damaged naturally just by picking up hot things all the time. But nothing could prepare me for what I went through, no. In mid-2008, former chef Andrew Reid barely survived a house fire. Andrew suffered burns to 60% of his body. He was in an induced coma for two weeks and spent seven weeks in intensive care. All up, he was in hospital for nine months. I wasn't able to walk. I had calcification in the arms, which meant um, my arms were stiff as boards. I was getting fed through a feeding tube. I had a tracheostomy. There was a lot of things I feared. There was uh, the emotion of how the scars were going to look, how uh, people were going to react to me. I couldn't begin to tell you how many things were running through my mind. So far, Andrew has undergone more than 20 operations, but current treatments for full thickness, large burns have major limitations. The affected areas never again look, feel or function like normal skin. They can't sweat in areas that are skin grafted. They can't properly regulate the temperature. The sensation is very altered in these areas. It always feels and also looks foreign, half numb. So for example, with a hand, imagine a burn that occurs over here, contractions occur with the tissue, and so it's very hard then to try and make use of that hand. So how do you pick up a fork, how to use a knife? It's very hard to try and imagine how someone's life gets affected like that. Current treatments such as skin grafts and so-called spray-on skin are very effective at sealing the wound replacing the damaged top layer of the skin, known as the epidermis. However, for skin to function normally, it's crucial to repair the dermis, that deeper layer of the skin which provides elasticity. The problem is, there's no effective replacement for the dermis. Patients with severe burns need a new treatment, something that will help rebuild their own skin, and this could be the breakthrough that delivers it. So what we've been able to do with this technology has been to construct material that looks a bit like kind of a flat sheet or sponge of material uh, that can be used to replace those deep damaged components of skin. It's known as 3D replacement skin and is being developed by Professor Tony Weiss at the University of Sydney. But it certainly feels nice and soft. Mm. Well, it's soft because, mm. of course, it's the same natural material found in, in elastin uh, yeah. that's part of newborn skin. So what happens is the burns injury would involve removing the section that's been burnt, mm. and then what you're left with basically is a section that used to contain skin. And this material would come along, will be laid across that surface, and suddenly converts the site from what used to be a really severe burn that's gone all the way through the upper, middle, lower layers to one that's effectively missing just the uppermost layer of skin. Creating the material required a revolutionary new approach. Professor Weiss not only developed an entirely synthetic form of our skin's natural elastin, he also developed an ingenious way of spinning it into a matrix of fibres. A very fine beam of what's initially liquid comes out through the side and then as it evaporates we're left just simply with this very fine thread hitting the target at the other end. So it gradually builds and builds over time? Exactly. And as it does so, we end up with this extraordinary kind of mesh of material where the thickness of each of these fibres resembles the thickness of fibres found in natural skin. And so in time, the, the person's own blood vessels and cells will just find their way through the crevices of, of this material? That's correct. Our, our tests thus far show that not only do the human cells grow through this material, but in other tests, we are able to show the blood vessels pass through this material as well. After 15 years of developing this biological scaffold, Professor Weiss believes clinical trials could begin within three years. At this stage, uh, every test we've done on the material suggests that material behaves well. And we've done a lot of tests on this. The benefit we have is that we have not simply made an approximation of what is required in nature, but we use the same building block nature provides. Whilst it may be some time off, but this will be 
the ultimate solution to the problem burns, and not only burns, I see application in chronic wounds, um, application for scar uh, reconstruction. There are a lot of people who will benefit eventually from something like a, a biological skin equivalent. After countless operations, Andrew is happy to wait for proof that it works before he'd contemplate going under the knife yet again. How does it sweat? How do the hair follicles grow back? Mm -hmm. What does it look like? Is the scarring any different to the, what it is now? I'm interested in all those things. But uh, it sounds exciting and it sounds like something that would help a lot of people.